Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the final day of Inquisitio. Welcome to the final uh, interdisciplinary national webinar series organized by the postgraduate department and research center of English Maharaja's Government Autonomous College, Ernakulam. Today we have with us Professor Sri Prasad R. from NSS College, Pandalam. He has published poems in various literary collections and journals. Called from the Dark, his collection of poems, published in the year 2016, gained him much appreciation. And his areas of interest are educational psychology, theater studies, and translation. And his area of research is cultural studies. He has submitted a UGC minor research project also, the title Implementing a Learner Software for the Enhancement of Vocabulary Acquisition Among Degree Level Students. And he is uh, one of the famous, right now he is a, a poet in our English language and he is writing in Malayalam too. And uh, actually I'm very happy that we got Professor Sri Prasad today right now with us in spite of his busy, busy schedule. Uh, actually, he is having corona duty and other things, and still he is here. So I welcome Professor Sri Prasad to our function. Thank you very much, Dr. Sabita. I'm extremely delighted to be a part of this academic endeavor organized by the Maharaja's College, Arnagalum. When uh, Dr. Sabita asked me to deliver a lecture on what all things that you have interested in. The first thing that come to my mind is, I just want to speak on poetry. Let me take this chance to extend my apology, but the thing is that uh, for the past eight days, I have been uh, in the Corona election duty. Uh, just now I have reached my home. I will share what all thoughts I do have in my mind. And it's a wonderful feeling to express ideas to students, along with my dear student teachers and teacher friends. Whenever you are saying that you are a student of literature, the first thing that comes to your mind is poetry. Because poetry is a flow of words. Whenever we face an audience, Whenever we try to depict ourselves in front of others, there is a sudden insight in our heart that sounds so interesting. That's what I choose this topic for this webinar session. I have prepared a PowerPoint for your kind reading. Let me start in my PowerPoint presentation. Once again, I uh, congratulate, congratulate all the wonderful organizers of this event. Let me proceed with my session. It is titled as Teaching of Poetry, A Journey Through the World of words whenever we say about poem or poetry the first definition that most of the students of literature come to have minds are is the definition given by robert frost poetry is the best words in the best order the arrangement of the best words in the best order Poetry is the soul of our heart. Poetry is something that resembles the mindset of every individual in this world. Therefore, without poetry, without a single line that emulates your own feelings, we cannot say that we are students of literature. Therefore, that's why I have titled this teaching of poetry, a journey through the world of words. We all are interested in journey. A journey is always different from a voyage. 
voyage is a journey through the sea whereas when you listen to the wonderful words by famous in famous or notorious writers of all around the globe we feel that we are also having our own journey through their wonderful passages of time and many other things poetry as it derived from the greek poesis which means making that's why poets are termed as sculptors someone who is ready to create something someone is ready to make wonderful artifacts out of clay or water vapor if a poet create things out from nothing poetry is a form of literature that uses aesthetic and often rhythmic qualities of language such as phonostics sound symbolism and meter sound creates a sense of emotional arousal in the audience the reader becomes more in touch with the writer the reading makes him understand the emotions of the writer for that purpose poets always used certain sounds certain nice words words that soothe their ears because we all know that we are listening the mindset of the writer while reading a poem we are listening the mindset of the individuals who surrounded that poet's life we are listening to the mindset of the time in which the poet has lived around before this sound even creates a kind of emotional exuberance for the listener who is the reader therefore poetry is a form of literature that uses aesthetic and often rhythmic qualities of language such as phonostics sound symbolism and meter if you take for an example from malayalam literary tradition ayyappa manikar is regarded as one of the greatest poets of all time from malayalam literature he was against some kind of uh, what is it tonality in the poem for example if we take the case of uh, uh, one of his famous poem poems vadak kulapadakum he says kam tagam padakam kulapadakum vadak kulapadakum it's an order there is a meter in which someone uh, uh, what is a resonates the idea of poetry for example we are also uh, very much interested in the poems of robert frost the woods so lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before and sleep and miles to go before i sleep there is an order in which the poet moves the mindset of the reader sound symbolism is there meter is there it is not a necessity you cannot claim that all most all poems should have a meter almost all poems should have a sound symbolism but quite a few writers are of the view that you should erase the mindset of the reader in order to erase the mindset of the reader there should be some usages of sound symbolism meter rhythm patterns etc to evoke meanings in addition to or in place of the prosaic ostensible meaning in addition to the sounds that are being produced while reading the poem you should be having the essence of certain ideas certain ideas that are very carnal to the life of individuals human beings therefore a poet is one who is ready to 
give you certain ideas along with certain rhythmic sensation. Two wonderful definitions given by world famous poets. Emily Dickinson. You all know the life of Emily Dickinson. He, she is a writer. She, uh, she could be termed as one of the most prosaic mindsets that have ever been in the history of world literature. According to her, if I read a book and it makes my body so cold, no fire can ever can warm me. I know that is poetry. If I read a book and it makes my body so cold, no fire ever can warm me. I know that is poetry. That is also one of the famous sensory perceptions given by these lovely words, lovely words for that matter from any writer. After reading a piece of writing, after reading a poem, if you feel that you are becoming tensed, you are becoming fringed with cold, it could be, it could not be turned again back to fire. You should understand that that is poetry. Poetry is the best words in the best order. What is lost in translation? That is poetry. Because poetry cannot be translated in the words of famous writers. They say that poetry cannot be translated. If you translate the words into another language, in another language, you will lose the essence. But in the uh, words of Emily Dickinson, she says that if I read a book and it makes my body so cold, no fire ever can warm me. I know that is poetry. And Dylan Thomas, one of the other famous poets who we all admire, he said, Poetry is what makes me laugh or cry or yawn. What makes my toenails twinkle? What makes me want to do this or that or nothing? I do all these things only because I love poems. I do live in this world because I am a lover of books. Poetry is what makes me laugh or cry or yawn, what makes my toenails twinkle, what makes me want to do this or that or nothing. Therefore, poetry is something that could be explained in words, though it's inexplicable. It's a kind of feeling that arouses your emotions. But one thing is very sure that these group of words could be felt. One important thing that you have to keep in your mind is that what makes a prose piece different from that of a poem? You may take two or three or four or five pages in order to understand the crux of a prose passage. Whether it's a short story, otherwise it should be a short story like that of a story of an hour by Kate Chopin. That's a wonderful story. It will be over by two or three pages. That's fine. Well, I'm good. But un otherwise, you should have to focus more on five to six pages. You have to understand the crux, the essence of the writer. But think of a poem. Even with four lines, even with a single line, you can express something very much inimitable from the poet to the reader. To strive to see 
to fight and that not to yield. Full many a gem of purest racery in the dark unfathomed caves of wash and bear. Full many a flower born to blush unseen and lost its sweetness in the desert air. With four lines you have said you have depicted a body of wonder. That is the essence of poetry. That is the importance of poetry. That is the relevance of poetry. Poetry is something sublime. Some may argue with me that prose is something intellectual, whereas poetry is something emotional. Who cares? After reading a single line, if you have a feeling in your mind, the poet has been in his endeavor. Poet one in his endeavor. Poet has achieved something that a prose writer cannot achieve with two or three or four pages. With a single line, a poet can arouse your emotions in what all ways. If a poetry is something inimitable. Though there are writers who copy from other persons' works and claim that everything is a translation, then why can't I translate? <laughs> That uh, that things uh, that that's kind of writers are there, but poetry is something that makes you feel that he has he or she has something to feel. To be a to be a poet is a condition, not a profession. As we all know, that a professional is one who is an who is having an expertise in various other things. He is a skilled laborer, but a skilled laborer cannot be a poet. <laughs> Anyone can be a poet. And the necessity is nothing but a condition. That's why once, at least once, in everyone's life, you may write one or two lines. It can be about a lover, it can be about a father, mother, brother, sister, it can be about a friend, it can be about a college life, it can be about death, it can be about separation. That's why Robert Graves have rightly commented that to be a poet is a condition. It is not a profession. Therefore, if you have tried to be a poet, you may, you may prove futile. You cannot be uh, sit in a chair and start writing. But you should have a kind of not conditioning, but a condition. Not classical conditioning or operant conditioning. As in the pedagogical analysis we say, it is not so, it is a kind of condition. In that particular situation, you will write. It's a kind of, what is it? It's a kind of call. It's a kind of inspirational call. Therefore, to be a poet is a condition, not a profession. It is written by Robert Graves in response to a questionnaire in Horizon, 1946. Are you with me? Can anyone please give me an answer? Sabita? Hello? Listening to you, Sri okay. Prasad, sir. Shall I, shall I show you a video now? Yes, yes, of course.
I'm very sure that you have all learned this point. My love is like a red, red rose that newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody that sweetly played in tune. And the poet says that I will love thee still, my dear. Till all the seas gone dry, till all the seas get dried, I will love you. I will love you still, my dear, when the rocks melt with the sun. What more can a writer, what more can a lover can do for, a, for the loved one? Therefore, my sincere consideration of a poet that first and foremost is a lover. A poet is a lover. What kind of love you can decide. Poet is a lover at first. 
To be a poet is a condition, not a profession. In the case of Robert Frost, he says, you all know who Robert Frost is. A poem begins as a lump in the throat, a sense of wrong, a homesickness, a love sickness. Frost is one of the best poets of all time. What he have listened to the poem is that of Burns, Robert Burns, and he has written in Scottish dialect, Scottish English dialect. You all know that. And uh, you, we may not understand properly what uh, Burns is uh, Burns has written in his works because uh, we may not follow Scottish English. We are not that much adept in Scottish English and all, but. The way in which he has expressed his love towards his loved one, etc. And this is another master, Robert Frost. How many definitions he has given to human beings, you know? In one of one of the famous, uh, I always ask my students the difference between a home and a house. Home and a house. Both are places in which we live in. But Robert Frost is a master of words, a master of words. He has given a wonderful definition for a home. We always say that home, when we say the word home, the air is inhaled. The air has been taken in, home. But when we say house, we are breathing out. House, home, house. The words are, what do you say, created in such a way that it shows your affection towards those places. Home is very close to your heart, whereas house is any building, you know. Any building can be a house, but not all buildings are homes. And Robert Frost has given Another beautiful definition of a home. Home is a place where when we have to go there, they have to take you in. Home is a place where when we have to go there, they have to take you in. Which means someone waits there for you in your home. Therefore, words, words, words are the storehouse of any language, any language for that matter. And poets are creators. And in Shakespeare's words, punners of words. Poets are creators of words. And a poem is rich in language. Language in the sense, words, compilation of words, the best words, in the best order of a group of words which arose a feeling. It can be a feeling of revolt. Who knows? I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. One of the most famous poems written by Shelley, Percy by Shelley. <laughs> but these days there is another interpretation for the same poem. I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. One of the selfish poets. Someone say that, some will say that he is a selfish poet. Who knows? I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. Therefore, please help me. Shelley is speedy. Therefore, uh, a reader can interpret these uh, ideas in any way. But one thing is very sure. A poet is a lover. At first, he's a lover of words.
dear viewers sorry for the interruption i believe there is some technical problem soon it shall be rectified please bear with us hello hello can you hear me now yes sir. yes yes, sir. yes. yes. Uh, when does it disconnected i didn't get you okay you were speaking about robert frost did you see that video yes yes, yes. okay a poem begins as a lump in the throat is it clear yes yes it's clear yes. okay a poem begins as a lump in the throat a sense of wrong a homesickness a love sickness the words of robert frost he is regarded as one of the favorite poets of all time he gave two wonderful definitions between home and house in his interpretation home is a place where when we have to go there they have to take you in home is a place of affection every building cannot be a home but every house can be a house but in a home inside a home there should be someone to take care of you will be accepted you will be received as such therefore home is a wonderful necessity in the words of rob frost sir yes yeah. sorry to interfere you can share your screen right now i have shared my screen wait once you could disconnected that's why could you please share your screen okay. once again yeah <clears throat> is it visible yes yes very much visible did you listen to what i said about home and house yes or no yes 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 okay poems are necessary because they honor the unknown both in us and in the world there may not be a million stars for the unknown that's why there is a wonderful poem the unknown citizen even if you are aware of uh, some of the great war poets siegfried sassoon rupert brooke there is a nice poem uh, by rupert brooke the soldier in that poem he says if i should die think only this of me that there is some corner of a foreign field that is forever england if i should die think only this of me likewise if you are taking the case of uh, a poem uh, refugee mother written by chinu achebe chinu achebe is trying to throw some light on a refugee mother and he is trying to say that he may not be the madonna and her child for the onlooker because she is poor but for the poet for the poet chinu achebe be this refugee mother is another madonna we may not be having an affection towards a refugee mother but for a poet he is having more benevolence he is at least showing more benevolence through his writing poems are necessary because they honor the unknown both in us and in the world there is a beautiful poem beggar maid in that poem the poet is trying to say how a beggar maid has been invited by the king kafetwa and he extends his wedding ring to this beggar maid that is a mindset of a poet the poet is always trying to achieve novelty through his writing and uh, bagamed is a beautiful poem 
העם סקרו שדה שלי, שיבוס מופד אבוד סקנסי, בפוד דקים דבק נמות, בפוד דקים כפק Rams across the brush he laid. We are seeing that beggar maid approaching the palace in front of the king. Her arms across the brush she laid. She was not having anything to wear upon. Before she was just holding her hands over his bare bosom. Her arms across the brush she laid. Therefore, the writer, the poet, is trying to honor the unknown. Poems are necessary because they honor the unknown, both in us and in the world. There are beautiful poems written in Malayalam. I, I fear that I couldn't uh, use uh, Malayalam uh, poetry. I don't, I don't think so, but uh, uh, since it's an online platform, I don't want to use much of the Malayalam poetry, but I'm more interested to Uh, what is a make a comparative study on uh, poetry from uh, english and malayalam because in malayalam you can express your heart in a better way because it's our mother tongue english is our other tongue poems are necessary because they honor the unknown both in us and in the world they come from an undiscovered country they are shaped in the form by the power of language These ones come from an undiscovered country. This undiscovered country has been once discovered by the poet. And we are seeing that undiscovered country through the words of the poet. Therefore, you are making another journey through the words written by a man in the past. Our great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-grandfather, who has written something in that page. You are going to make a revisit through the words. These poems come from an undiscovered country. They are shaped into form by the power of language. Language. Language is, is a word that, uh, what is it, derived from lang. In Samskritam we say linga yadi. something that moves from one shape to another something that make makes a movement movement moving words words helps to travel from one place to another with the help of language the poet is trying to seal this undiscovered country to the mindset of the readers before at first i said poet is a lover They set free to fly with wings of images and metaphor. Imagine a world in which everything is already known. It would be a dead world. No questions, no wonder, no other possibility. Poetry is a phoenix I can fly on to return to that forgotten land. If everything in this world is already known, there is nothing new in it. There should be some kind of mystery in it. That's why there is a beautiful poem written by John Keats. La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. Now both Dame Sans Mercy. The beautiful girl without any mercy. The poem starts like this, you know. Oh, what can ail the night at times alone and palely loitering the sedges withered from the lake and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail the night of Sam so haggard and so woe begone? The squirrel's granary is full and the harvest is done. And suddenly this warrior is giving a reply. I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairy's child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, but her eyes were wide. It's, a, it's, an, it's an untraveled world, you know. The poet is taking you to this untraveled world, the land of mystery. I met a lady in the meads, 
full beautiful a fairy child her hair was long her foot was light but her eyes were wild you have been traveling along with the poet to this unknown world such pleasure such emotional what you can say emotional exuberance while you read a poem you have been traveling along with the poet to this deep recesses of the past imagine a world in which everything is already known it would be a dead world no questions no wonder no other possibility and with the help of a poem it helps you to fly on to return to that unforgotten sorry forgotten land and it will help you to raise again like that of a phoenix like a phoenix you are getting a fresh you are getting the experiences of things in the past the folk poet helps you to be like a phoenix bird <laughs> you all know what the importance of thomas stern eliot immature poets imitate mature poets steal see so funny but it's true to some extent even thomas stern eliot when that april day with its shuri sute the drought of march a pierced to the root day the opening lines of chaucer's canterbury tales when that april day with its shuri sute the drought of march a pierced to the root day when in april the sweet showers fall that is why that is how chaucer has started his canterbury tales look at the way in which thomas stone eliot started his wasteland april is the cruelest month when chaucer starts with april eliot also started with april but in a different way and in in the midst uh, midst of the poem he is also saying that come here i will show you fear in a handful of dust those are words from the bible in, uh, you may have noticed as in front of uh, churches you might have seen uh, the the words of uh, bible have been written come hither i will show thee the bride the lamb's as wife come come here please i will show you the bride lamb's as wife therefore poets always try to imitate but some cunning poets some metro poets they steal in the in the words of eliot now we can move on to another video i will show you one more video Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Okay, okay. As I've said earlier, the first thing is the poet is a law. The second important thing is the poet is a loner. The poet is a man of solitude. That's why we do have poets like William Wordsworth. You can find the solitary chases of the poet. Here, in this poem too, you can find that poet is now a loner. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep. Miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Again, a loner. A loner poet. A poet who is alone in this world. First important thing is that the poet is a law. The second thing that I feel more common to a poet is that of loneliness. Loneliness make a poet write anything like something. He will write on anything in his life because his mind is full. When the mind is full, he cannot escape writing. When the mind is full, the poet cannot keep his pen down. He should start writing. Poetry, if we let it and embrace it, can offer us a way to empathize with one another. In its immediacy, poetry is a counselor helping us to understand one another, leading us away from hate to love, from violence to mercy and pity. This is the third important thing I just want to say. A poet is always a man of benevolence. You are not going to detail out the professional, sorry, the personal life of the writer. You don't want to deal with the personal life of the writer. Think only about the words that he has created. Try, try to think, try to find that writer in his words, not in his personal life. If you are ready to do that, you can surely say that the poet is always a man of empathy. The poet is always a man of uh, uh, what is it? feeling towards others, nice feeling towards others, to be in someone else's shoes. Empathetic, a man of benevolence. Therefore, we may say that we must say say that. A poet is always a kind of counselor, a kind of empowering feelings towards others. If a poet is always interested to embrace emotions in a better way for the betterment of others, not for his personal benefit, but for the betterment of others. Poetry, if we let it and embrace it, can offer us a way to empathize with one another in its immediacy. Poetry is a counselor helping us to understand one another, leading us away from hate to love, from violence to mercy and pity. Wallace Stevens, as you all know, one of the famous poets, and he says that poetry is the priest of the invisible. Who knows? He's giving you guidelines. He's giving you guidelines from their power. Poet is the priest of the invisible for the visible. The poet is trying to be a gradual counselor, a counselor for the betterment of others. For the poet is the priest of the invisible. I will show you 
how can it be through a video Hello. You might be having the intention that it was the words between two lovers, but I would like to see the conversation between the sun and the lonely poet. The sun and the lonely poet. Tomorrow starts without me. When to, if tomorrow starts without me, the saying of the sun, the getting back of the sun to the divine abode, the talk between the sun and the sea. Therefore, we don't know what the poet is having in his mind. The poet is the priest of the invisible. The poet is the priest of the invisible. That's really apt from Wallace Stevens. Poetry lifts the veil from the hidden beauty of the world and makes familiar objects be as if 
they were not familiar. Poetry lifts the veil from the hidden beauty of the world and makes familiar objects be as if they were not familiar. This is the technique used by the poet. With the help of words, he is trying to make familiar things, common day things, just unfamiliar. Because what all see in the faces of these objects, in addition to what we see in these objects, the poets are having a divine eye to see the hidden, the hidden in these objects. Therefore, poetry always lifts the veil from the hidden beauty of the world and makes familiar objects be as if they were not familiar by Percy by Shelley. As I've said, the poet is a lover, the poet is a loner, the poet is having certain divinity in his hand. Poetry is so important because it helps us understand and appreciate the world around us. Poetry's strength lies in its ability to shed a sideways light on the world so the truth sneaks up onto you. No question about it. Poetry teaches us how to live. Poetry bears open the vulnerabilities of human beings so we can all relate to each other a little better. I have to rough, rush through the slides because I, I do fear that it's time. Sabita, so you take your time. Doesn't matter, right? Okay. Poetry is so important because it helps us understand and appreciate the world around us. Poetry's strength lies in its ability to shed a sideways light on the world. So the truth sneaks up on you. No question about it. Poetry teaches us how to live. This is very much important. Poetry enables us to live. How to live. Living is not an easy thing. But living better. Living by going, doing good to others is a, is a great thing. The poetry bears open the vulnerabilities of human beings so we can all relate to each other a little better. I always consider that the humanitarian aspects of poetry in general. I just want to focus on the positivities of poetry. I don't want to deal with the negativities of poetry. Poetry sometimes take you to uh, bad thoughts, bad emotions. I don't want to deal with those uh, negative approaches. I just want to be an optimist. I always try to be an optimist. And although we could find pessimism to a great extent in poets, I do feel that most of the poems give you a kind of sanguineness, a kind of uh, acceptance of life. In one of the famous poems by Kuriyupurasa uh, Rigumar, one of the wonderful poets in Malayalam, he says, I, I, I'm always interested in using these four words, these four lines. Kavida aswasthada, kavida yen swasthada, porulinna murta vigara sangeediga, kavida atmarthada, kavida vishwasthada, kavida yen prana novinda parambara. A poet should be, a poet is always having a kind of uh, commitment towards his writing. Poet is truthful to his art. And poet is trying to give the sanguine uh, movement of his uh, what is it, music, sanguine rejoice of his musicality through his words. A poet is always emotional. Sometimes poet will be a revolutionary. One day will come and all will say, I merely lunatic. There is a famous 
Chilean poem you all know about a revolution. Urikel and Natale, Tum, the Ridra, Janangal, E. Natale, Rastri, Buddhiji, Vigal, Chodin, Jayapur. Poet is also a revolutionary, no doubt. But even that revolution comes to his come uh, what is it, sprouts from his desire to do good to others this empathetic attitude empathy towards others quite becomes a revolutionary because he is having a kind of attachment towards others suffering a kind of oneness with that of others suffering in order to avoid those suffering poet says that raise your arms go for the revolt but it starts from your heart if a poet always reside in his heart poets always reside in his heart in their hearts poetry bears open the vulnerabilities of human beings so we can all relate to each other a little better we all have the same feelings we all have the same sides from this world but we may not see all these things that the poets see. Poetry base open the vulnerabilities of human beings so we can all relate to each other a little better. It is a wonderful quotation. I just want to remind you of this quotation. Artists and poets are the raw nerve ends of humanity. By themselves, they can do little to save humanity. But the most important thing is that without them, there would be little worth saving. Artists and poets are the raw nerve ends of humanity. By themselves, they can do little to save humanity. But without them, there would be little worth saving. You may feel that if these poets are writing like this, what they are going to achieve, what they, what is the purpose of their writing, what are they going to gain out from their writing? You may be, you may be asking these kinds of questions. It's very easy to write some certain words, but it may not be easy. It is not always easy to arouse such poignant emotions in the mindset of the readers. Therefore. If you believe that with the help of these words, the poets are not going to do anything to save humanity. But without the poets, without the artist, there would be little worth saving. If they are not there in this world, there is no purpose in saving anything for others. It is an anonymous inscription on the headstone in Green River Cemetery. Springs, New York, where Jackson Pollock, Elaine de Kooning, and other artists are buried. This is a tombstone word. You all know about the tombstone words. Some, if you are, if you are thinking about the tombstone word of John Keats, here lies a man whose name is writ in water. The tombstone words of John Keats, here lies a man whose name is writ in water. John Keats in the cemetery words of, sorry, tombstone words of. Likewise, if you if you are aware of the tombstone words of Sylvia Plath, you all know about Sylvia Plath. And her tombstone words are awesome, you know. Even amidst fierce flames, the golden lotus can be planted. Because Sylvia Plath is such an individual who has faced many, many negative happenings in her life. And the tombstone words are worth reading. Even amidst fierce flames, the golden lotus can be planted. Even amidst fierce flames, 
the golden lotus can be planted. Look at the way in which the character of Sylvia Plata has been depicted in her tombstone words. If a poet is someone who is living beyond times. I just want to give you one more depiction of uh, a famous poem. A poem and a hymn written by Thomas Hood. It shows the poignancy in its antithetical ideal Victorian death, a missing, a loss, the moment not being shared, the unideal Victorian death, the death bed by Thomas Hood. The death bed by Thomas Hood. We watched her breathing through the night, her breathing soft and low, as on a breast the wave of life kept heaving to and fro. So silently we seemed to speak, so slowly moved about, as we had lent the half our prayer pause to eke a being out. Our very hopes belied our fears, our fears our hopes belied. We thought her dying when she slept, and sleeping when she died. And I love the last four lines like anything. We all have experienced such dramatic experience in our lives. And someone is waiting for her or his death. If you were near his deathbed, whether it's your grandfather, whether it's your father, whether it's your mother, whether it's your friend, it's, it's such a painful phenomenon. And look at the way in which Thomas Sud has expressed this empathy the empathy of a human being. The last four lines. For men, for when the morn came dim and sad and chill with early showers, her eye, quiet eyelids closed, she had another morn than ours. For when the morn came dim and sad, and chill with early showers, her quiet eyelids closed, she had another moon than ours. Poet is saying that she left this world and she is going to have another morning, another beautiful morning, another morning than ours, another morning than ours. Look at the way in which once one person's death has been depicted, a new sunrise, a new morning. She is having another morning than ours. She may be reaching another great destination. If poet is always a man of empathy. Therefore, this is what I just want to depict about. depict about this session, this session on poetry. Poet is a lover. Poet is a rebel. Poet is a loner. Poet is emancipator, as you have seen in the last poem by Thomas Hood. You are giving freedom. Poet is giving you freedom, license. Poet is giving you emancipation. Therefore, in all ways, you can say that poetry is humanity. Through these wonderful words, through this journey of words, you are seeing, you are experiencing humanity. Poetry is a poet is a law, poet is a rebel, poet is a loner, poet is an emancipator, poetry is humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on this great occasion. Thank you.
Thank you, Sri Prasad. To be a poet is a condition, not a profession. True. In every sense, you are a true poet. I knew that you are a good singer and you sang also very well today. You have given us a visual as well as auditory feast. Thank you, dear Professor Sri Prasad, for such an enchanting session. It was like a rainfall. You. Your words had a soothing effect. Like a true poet, you have given us many ideas about rhythmic nuances of poetry. Yes, you are right. Your speech, like a true poetry, was capable to arouse emotions in the minds of us, we listeners. We are really transported into another realm. Thank you, Sri Prasad, for such a refreshing talk. You explained the various aspects of teaching poetry with meticulous elucidation. Thank you very much for such an overwhelming speech. Now I would like to invite Sri Lakshmi for reading out the questions. We have some questions there in the chat box. Sri. Sri Lakshmi, you are muted. We can't hear you. You are not audible. Hello, ma'am. Yes, it's good. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, sir, for your enlightening session. Uh, why should we be asked uh, four questions? First one is, uh, poetry was once seen uh, by our poet as a tool to criticize social norms and social problems. But nowadays, there have been four changes in poetry and its style of writing. How do you evaluate them? Could you please repeat the question? I couldn't... Okay, okay, sir. Um, yeah. Poetry was once seen by our poets as a tool to criticize social norms and social problems. But nowadays, there have been core changes in poetry and its style of writing. How do you evaluate them? Earlier, you say that uh, poetry at bottom is a criticism of life. It's a definition given by T.S. Eliot. We have to criticize life as it is. But my simple suggestion is that these days, there are certain side takings by certain writers. Politics, in com politics comes in between. When politics arises in the mindset of a writer, you cannot be truthful. If you are talking for the society, that is well and good. But if you are talking for certain political ideology, that is absurd in my terms. Because poetry at bottom is the criticism of life, life as it is. Therefore, in the earlier decades too, we can find writers who stand with certain ideologies. Ideologies are always for the welfare of a nice society, a betterment of our future generations. But politics, when travels outside the realm of ideologies, poets should keep away from it. Poet, poets should take a live, I say. That's my opinion. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the second question is, um, is this how letters, knowledge, poetry, and other literary works play a major role in shaping an individual and a society? Absolutely. That is a wonderful question. I surely uh, would say receive that question as the crux of that question. Because uh, if you read poetry, if you read uh, prose pieces, if you are a student of literature, you are going to analyze life as it is. You are going to find the mindset of different individuals who lived in this world. Therefore, you are going to have more experiences from their own lives. That will be for your betterment. And that can help you in wondrous ways. 
what is it, innumerable ways that you can change your society, you can make others know what is good and what is bad. There is nothing called good or bad, only our thinking makes it so. But if you have a flair for words, a flair for the wonderful words of poets or prose writers, you can experience good thinking. Good thinking and good clarity of thought will make you a better person, a better human being. Uh, thank you, sir. The third question is, uh, what can we learn by studying fields of poetry? What are the opportunities that such a field of study opens up before us? One of the most important uh, fields of uh, poetry is creative writing. If you are interested in uh, what is a, uh, writing at least one line, if you are having any having a desire to write one line per day, with the passage of time, you can make wonderful poems. You can be a creative writer. And it is very easy to copy down things. It is very easy to, what do you say, jot down things after listening to certain uh, lectures or so. But if you can write one word, one line of your own, that's a credit. That is, that is a, what is a, what you can say, that is a kind of pregnancy that you feel. Uh, there is a, a famous writer, Singaporean writer, Shirley. She said once in an interview that I cannot live without writing. It gives a kind of psychological relief because I'm, I'm pregnant. I cannot live without writing. After giving birth to my work, I feel relieved. Like that of a mother. If, if you can write a single line, a, a single line, that gives you, uh, what is it, a kind of satisfaction. That's great. Try to experience that. Okay, thank you, sir. The first question is, uh, can you please tell us which are the best books in the world literary history that critically evaluate the poetic history of Kerala, India, and the world and field of literature? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm afraid that I don't have an answer for that. If you are oh, asking me the, the literary history of Kerala, Aidi Hamala will help you to a great extent, but not about poetry. We want to understand more about Kerala history. The best, best option is Aidi Hamala. You can get many a thing from that particular text. And you can surely jot down uh, wonderful ideas. Uh, what is it? What you can say? Wonderful uh, poetry pieces also from that from that book. But it's not a book of poem. It's a, not a book of poetry. It's a book of literary history of our land. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is asked by uh, Sri Lakshmi Santosh. Uh, immature poets imitate uh, mature poets steal. Why should the mature poets needs to steal? Immature poets doesn't have any, or uh, they don't have any kind of uh, what is it, inhibition to say that I'm I'm in the process of writing. That is why he is immature. I'm in the process of writing. Therefore, I will surely imitate. I just want to be a poet like Wordsworth. Therefore, I just imitate. But a mature poet cannot imitate. But he believes that he is a poet. Therefore, if he is using words that is not recommended by uh, what is it. Uh, readers, he will be making a fool of himself. Therefore, he's trying to make a kind of stealing from other writers. And one thing is very sure that every kind of writing is a kind of uh, imitation. Uh, have you read uh, Panjadandra tales? We all have read Panjadandra tales in our lives. And Panchadandra Tales is the real originator of storytelling in the world. Do you know that? Many kinds of story lighting have been transformed from this land. They have been transformed, it has been translated into various other languages during the 6th century and later in 10th century. And only in 13th century, we are having. 1340, 
to 1400 we do have chaucer even chaucer is having an influence of these translations therefore if you have a reading of any text that will have an imprint on your heart if that's a work i i won't say that it's a good work or a bad work any kind of work even if you see a movie even if you see an individual while you travel in a bus you you will you will have a kind of remembrance of that face while you what is a reach home if that if 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 he's having an imprint over on your heart that's that's why we say that it's all a kind of repetition it's a kind of imitation it's an imitation of an action series and complete in itself we can, we can say like that but it is an art even though it, if it's because we have seen very uh, similar romantic movies from hindi or english or malayalam or tamil similar similar very similar romantic movies but there is some change we know that it's a romantic film but we are really interested to see the film there is there are some changes with the thread with the script writing therefore uh, there will be a shade there will be a shade of uh, similarity doesn't matter try to make certain changes in itself you can uh, you can create wonders i will i will i will give you an example uh, the title of my book was called from the dark called from the dark actually i do have that idea in my mind in malayalam but when i translated into english it was having something different but that title i have got from my student one of my dear students uh all these things we do have a certain uh, reminiscences in our mind some forgotten events too all these will have even if you write an essay during your examination what do you write over there you may be having certain ideas in your mind you may incorporate certain other things and you are going to write it as your own your own essay for this question how can i say sir how can i say that it's your answer you will be having uh, what to say examples taken from different experiences that you gained in your life like twice the point is also doing the same thing but he is not writing an essay he may be writing only eight lines but with those eight lines he is giving life to million questions okay sir the next question uh, is asked by vaishnavi v uh, what is the difference between uh, rhythmic poetry prose poetry logic poetry and irrational poetry irrational poetry yeah uh as i said earlier that some believe that uh, there is no need for rhythm in poem from uh, for example we can say that red wheel barrow is a famous poem written by uh, e, uh sorry e cummings it's a it's just a four line poem so much depends upon a red wheel barrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens there is no rhythm in it you may not say that it's a rational poem but it's full of meanings so much depends upon a red wheel barrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens this is one of the best poems ever written in english language or english literature this is a very simple poem he has just depicted about he has just depicted about a group of chickens near a red wheel barrow the only thing is that it's raining it's an imagist poem therefore rhythm doesn't matter in almost all poems there is no need for rhythm all, always uh, uh, even if you are saying that uh, in the case of e cummings himself he has written some poems a leaf falls in a vertical way he has written this line a leaf falls in a vertical way he has written a leaf falls by reading that line you understand that as leaf has fallen 
Therefore, there are different techniques in which poets deal with the literary works. It can be uh, what is it? It can be of a lyric. It can be of music. It can be of uh, rhyme. It can be of irrationality. Uh, I, I don't. I don't uh, want to what is it? Make a comparison between all these things. They, they are all their own uh, intentions or their own desires. Let it be. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for your wonderful questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Prasad. Now let me invite Amal Sebastian for the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. I'm very honored to have the opportunity to thank everyone who participated in the webinar and all who conducted the webinar. So first of all, on behalf of the Department of English, Maharaja's College, I would like to thank Professor Sri Prasad R, the Assistant Professor of MSS College, Mandalam. Actually, you just enlightened us with your valuable words by describing the nuances of poetry. And even I could say that the fan in your room was so poetic and rhythmic. And the way you just taught us the poetry and recited the poems was just excellent. And I would like to thank on behalf of the Department of English from Maharaja's College. Thank you, sir. I would further extend my hearty thanks to Dr. Matthew George, the Honorable Principal of Maharaja's College, for making this event happen. Thank you, sir. And I would like to take this opportunity to specially express my deep gratitude to the IQSC Department of Maharaja's College for coordinating such a beautiful function. I would like to thank Dr. Rekha Karim, head of the Department of English, Maharaja's College, for always encouraging us and providing us opportunities to organize such events. Thank you, ma'am. My deepest sense of appreciation to Dr. Sabida S. Babu, the coordinator without whom the program wouldn't have been this much successful. Thank you, ma'am, for your honorable support. I heartily convey my gratitude to the loving teachers and the students of the Department of English Maharaja's College for being the pillars of support. We have always been like a family. Thank you all. A big thanks to all the participants who chose to be live with us and attend the webinar with great enthusiasm and made it a successful event. And as Robert Frost would define poetry, the best words in the best order, I would like to define Inquisitio 2020 as the best talks from the best scholars. Once again, thanking you all for being with us. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Amel. Thank you so much. Uh, my dear participants, I have shared feedback link of today. They're in this WhatsApp group. And uh, we have one more feedback link, and that would be shared within 10, day, uh, 10 minutes. See, uh, now that we have come to the end of our session, we'll be having a small valedictory function. And uh, before going on to this valedictory function, I would like to share my screen with you because uh, uh, we have just analyzed the feedbacks uh, received from the participants. And we have just arrived at a conclusion. And I would just like to share the thing with you. I'm sharing my screen. Yes. OK, uh, this national webinar series and the date and time. Okay, I have asked uh, through this feedback, we have asked seven questions. And the first question was this thing, how much this participate presentation of subject, whether it was presented in an effective manner. And 53.3 percentage people strongly agreed that uh, the presentation was very much effective. And 46.7 uh, percentage people agreed to our opinion. And then this is the one uh, problem we faced actually time. And 62.2% people had commented that they were 
not at all supporting this time actually this is just a being we'll be having any more programs so i can give you one assurance that we'll be arranging some other time from the next time onwards and uh, only 37.8 percentage of people were there who were supporting the 7 to 8 pm time and then uh, the third question was this thing uh, regarding the a uh, new information information of new information 66.7 percentage of people they having this opinion that the webinar was successful enough in providing them new information and 33.3 percentage when not at all supporting this thing and the webinar was helpful to 91.5 percentage of the people and the rating of seminars uh, out of this three point scale actually we had given some others poor bad and other things but Uh, fortunately or unfortunately this people had given us the extent very good and good uh, 48% of people were thinking that okay, this is excellent and very good was given by 25% of people and good according to 27% of people as uh, maybe now was good and uh, and we got many suggestions like from, from next time onwards we must arrange maybe as of seminars if there is offline on topics like disability studies black literature cyber laws Research methodology and LGBTQ literature. Many more, many people, many kinds of suggestions were there. And uh, the suggestions like uh, inclusivity is improving. So these are the one or two suggestions. This is the one thing which I like like most. And uh, this platform, changing of this platform was another thing which was suggested. So many good meet. Actually, uh, it's our Maharashtra government college. It's uh, our decision of a college that uh, we have we had to follow the stream. Yeah, it's a live streaming studio. It's used in your own zones, so where you can have an interview with people, and you can share your screen, and you can connect to YouTube and uh, Facebook. So that's why uh, we selected Streamyard. And that's the reason of uh, this uh, Streamyard. I hope you people would understand. Okay. Now uh, this is just an analysis of the uh, based on the feedbacks received by us. Now moving on to our valedictory function, I would like to invite. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, Santosh, sir? Hi. Ah, yeah. You are audible. Okay. okay. So I'm welcoming you, sir, just to share your unique ideas with us. Okay. Good evening to one and all. The coordinator of the workshop series, the coordinator of the national level webinar series, Dr. Sabida S. Babu. The principal of the college, Dr. Mati George. Dr. Sujay TV, faculty member of Department of English. Sri Prakash, the resource person for the day. the fellow panelists and the participants of the webinar series who are attending this webinar only i am participating in this webinar series as the coordinator of iqac of the college iqac is an abbreviation of internal quality assurance cell and headed by the university grants commission and this iqac you can see functioning in every college and in every university in our nation the chief objective of iqac is to make quality as the defining element in all the activities of every academic institution in our country so to make quality as the defining factor in all the academic activities it is actually easier said than done quality is a very tricky issue be very well known for each person he defines quality according to his own convenience according to because of this tricky nature of quality so because of that in maharajas we have defined quality we have articulated our own 
our own view regarding quality. And in Maharajas, quality is articulated as transformation. We define quality as transformation. And this transformation has two dimensions also. The first dimension is that we will continuously endeavor, we will continuously attempt to enhance our theoretical understanding and the social implications of whatever be the knowledge that we have acquired. And the second aspect of this transformation, the transformative definition of quality is with respect to the empowerment of each and every member of the academic community in the decision making process which will eventually lead every person to be empowered in leading one's own transformation in the direction of progress. So we have twin aspects for this quality in Maharajas. And with respect to the first aspect of quality, that the continuous enhancement and comprehension of theoretical understanding and its social implication. We are conducting this type of academic webinars in all the teaching departments of the college. When IQAC came with this suggestion, all the departments of the college, we have 19 teaching departments in the college, and all the departments have positively responded to the suggestion of the team IQAC. And English department is one among the first departments which has completed the series of webinars. And the Department of English has organized a six-day program as a response to the suggestion of IQAC. And I take this opportunity to congratulate the entire Team English, led by Dr. Rega Gheri, the head of the Department of English, the fellow faculty members of the department, and the very vibrant student community of the department. Apart from that, we have a very dynamic coordinator for this national level webinar series. Dr. Sabida S. Babu has organized this webinar in an excellent manner, in a well-sequenced manner, in which wide-ranging issues has been discussed and debated, starting from how to make meaning out of the various literary works, the issues of transgender community as reflected in various literary works and finally how to teach poetry by uh, Sri Prakash. So this six day webinar, webinar series actually dealt with an entire gamut of issues which are being currently discussed in English language and literature. I take this opportunity on behalf of the entire IQAC team to express our congratulations not only to the Department of English, but also to the organizers, especially Sabida S. Babu and the student community of the department. Apart from that, another aspect is also there, which gives a lot of delight to me. And that is with respect to the active participation by the student community of the department. On many days, I have seen that, apart from the coordinator and apart from the resource person, Almost all the fellow panelists were the postgraduate, postgraduate students of the department. So the lot, the initiative, the vibrancy displayed by the student community of the department actually gives a lot of confidence to the team IQAC to think about suggesting webinar series by each department completely envisaged and organized by the student community in the days to come. So I, on, on behalf of the department, on, the, on behalf of the IQAC of the college, I take this opportunity to uh, congratulate and express the note of appreciation of the IQAC for the entire student community of Department of English. And as I have pointed out earlier, we have defined quality as transformation and the first aspect of that transformation is with respect to the continuous enhancement of knowledge, continuous enhancement of theoretical understanding and also its social implications. 
And because of that, we are conducting this type of debates and discussions. So once again, I accentuate this particular aspect and, and encourage and motivate the entire Department of English uh, to organize and initiate various academic activities in that direction. With these words, I, 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 I conclude my small speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandor, sir. Actually, you were really a great support for us. Actually, without you, this program would never, never have been a successful one. Thank you, sir. Now, let me invite Dr. Sujay TV, one of the senior most faculty members of our department, to deliver water. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sabita. Hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are audible. Distinguished guest of the day, our resource person, a poet at heart, Professor Sri Prasad, Honorable Principal of the College, esteemed Aquasi Coordinator, dignified Head of the Department, esteemed Coordinator of this webinar, distinguished participants from various colleges all over India, our beloved department faculty and dearest students. It's been over eight months that we, the people of the 21st century, have been battling with the pandemic COVID-19. Education has never had a standstill anywhere especially in our state. It has all the more been an energizing endeavor to keep up the spirits of the young and old alike when death has been doing its devastating dance dangerously all over the world. Time has come to bid goodbye to this dreadful 2020. Winter has set in, but in Maharajas, we have unfurled the spring season of a variety of webinars hosted by all the departments here. The Postgraduate Department of English and Research Center has joined this pageant with a webinar series accommodating six invited lectures on various topics ranging from writing pandemic literal truth and meaning making, representing culture and tradition in films, theory and practice of cultural studies and literary research, transgender studies to today's lecture on world of words, teaching of poetry. From day one of, that is December 2nd, 2020, to day six, that is today, Resource persons from Delhi, Ghaziabad, Kasargod, Malapuram, and Pandalam came to meet us online and provided us with evenings of academic deliberations. I'm sure that this experience has given a boost to the research pursuits of our students and all the participants. When the curtain falls on the sixth and last day of the Inquisitio National Webinar Series has initiated to the us to the nuances of the new normal, both in the way we interrogate the theory and practice. The ignited spirit of critique will take all of us to greater avenues of knowledge and wisdom. Boundless thanks to the efforts of all who work behind this venture. Let me express my formal offer of gratitude to Dr. Matthew George, Honorable Principal of Maharajas College at Nakulam, who has always revealed a genuine interest in the academic activities of the college. He has inspired our department to host this webinar. Now, I think he will be listening to us in the live stream through the YouTube on behalf of the Department of English and all the participants, I extend to you, sir, our heartfelt gratitude. 
it's for the first time that we have experimented with the live streaming of the webinars. In fact, it was done under the auspices of the IEC of the college, steered by Professor Sandhu Shivagis. In spite of a hectic work schedule, Sandhu sir has found time to assist us with technical support on all the six days. His motivation and support throughout has rendered this live streaming of webinar a success. We are deeply indebted to you, sir, for the wholehearted support and guidance. On behalf of the Department of English and all participants, we extend to you our profound gratitude. Dr. Rekha Karim, the head of the department, has been the guiding spirit in this journey. She has always been particular about the systematic execution of the program. As a matter of formality, on behalf of all who are in this meet, let me offer you our deep thanks. I also take this opportunity to thank the resource persons who took us to the world of inquiry on every day from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for the last six days. Dr. Ohipi, Dr. Sweta Anthony, Professor Biju NC, Dr. Harris K, Dr. Bulbul Gupta, and Professor Sri Prasad R. Sri Prasad sir is here with us now. Now, the oldest but the most mysterious literary form poetry was unraveled before us through definitions and various epitaphs. So it was a nice journey with you, sir, since the words came innate from the heart of a poet. So it was very a warm at home feeling with you, sir. We shall always cherish this moment spent with you. For unraveling the new vistas in front of us, we express our happiness and utmost indebtedness to all the resource persons. The omnipresent coordinator of this program is our dynamic and vibrant faculty member, Dr. Sabda S. Babu. Words do not suffice to express her sweat and toil to bring this venture on stage and that too on the online platform for consecutive six days. From hiring the resource persons, preparing the brochure, inviting the participants, arranging everyday schedule and well executed live streaming and also for uh, the a magic that today she has presented us with the statistics of the feedback as well. We never expected that. So it was all a magic that uh, Dr. Savita has unfurled in front of us. So she has done an excellent work of making this national webinar series come true fruitfully. On behalf of the other faculty of our department and all the participants, I offer you, dear Dr. Savita, a bouquet of flowers of joy and thanks and congratulations. Now, the great support of our beautiful PG students has been a great boon on these six days. They put up a grand presence in our StreamYard studio and organized the program very well. On behalf of the department and all participants, I congratulate our PG volunteers who steered the question sessions of the webinars. Let me also express my gratitude to Dr. Reem S who did act as a moderator on the second day of our webinars. Big thanks to all the participants, friends, esteemed faculty of various colleges and universities across India, and all students from different colleges and from our own department and from students of other departments who enriched the online meet with your active presence and interventions. Thanks are due to our beloved friends of our own department as well. Let me thank each and every one of you once again with a parting note that let us ignited by these intellectual deliberations shall leave us a glow to be better post-pandemic persona with our desire for novel perspectives and challenges, expecting greater deliberations, meaningful discussions, 
in future platforms, both online and offline. Meet you all. Love you all. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, Sujamis, for such loving words. <laughs> Thank you all my dear participants for being such wonderful participants and we will send your certificates within next 10 working days through your mail. After receiving your certificates, you can leave the WhatsApp group in your webinar. This is actually, I just want to tell you one thing, this is not an end, this is just a beginning. I am very sure that we will be meeting again in future for many more academic deliberations. Thank you all. Let's call it a day.